All right, welcome back to Sky Shower. This is Noah. And this is Jesse. All right, Jesse. So uh, how are you doing this week? Oh, it's been a very good week. Uh, lots of rest and relaxation. How about yourself? Uh, it's been a very busy week for me. <laughs> Nothing but work. <laughs> well, So I'm really looking forward to tonight. Yeah, a little bit of time for play. Yes. Uh, what do we have on the docket tonight? All right, well... The scotch we'll be tasting will be the Talisker Storm. So we're going to taste this. Riders on a storm. That's right. The single malt scotch whiskey from the Isle of Skye. And, Isle of Skye. And uh, we're going to pray that for a scotch that's not as aged as much as we usually like 10 plus years, that it doesn't leave us wanting. I'm pretty sure it's going to leave us wanting. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, the Dalmore did not. So, yeah, yeah, but that's more than 10 years. Yeah, so. that's a good 12 years. Oh. Okay, so what do we know about this? Uh, besides uh, the Isle of Skye, not a whole lot. Talisker's known for its 10-year scotch largely. A um, little smoky, a little black pepper. Um, really supposed to be not so sweet. One of those full-bodied scotches where... The medium to long finish uh, finishes nicely with that PD flavor. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Well, I guess let's uh, break it open and we'll try it out. All right. Sounds good. Uh, you know, I do have to oh. say there's one, one thing. Noah likes that one cube of ice in his scotch. So this was very important to me. And uh, it was very important to me that he got to do this in style. So we've got the dum, 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 Darth Vader dum, dum, Ice Cube dum, dum, for his scotch. Dum, 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 <laughs> dum, 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 dum. I will choke you. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> so were, were there anything I'm, in particular that any things in particular that made this week a long one for you? Uh, yeah, I had um, like so like last week I worked all weekend uh, teaching people life insurance and health insurance. And then this weekend with another company, I taught life insurance again. So I actually this is what, eight days straight of working. No, no weekend. So it's just been a little bit long. It's a long stretch. Dude, you don't even know how happy I am about the Darth Vader ice cubes. <laughs> As you know, I'm a huge uh, Star Wars fan. Yes. Oh, man. Smells good. Looking at the color, it's lighter than last week. It's kind of more on par with like, what we've had the last couple of weeks prior. Yeah. Uh, light, yeah, um, but almost light. gold finish. Yeah, light like golden. Mm. I am enjoying that immediate sense of smoke. Yeah. Followed by peat. Two things I very much so enjoy. Getting a little sense of pepper. I was going to say spice, but I guess it would be pepper. But uh, yeah, definitely get smoke right away. I, I actually think this is a great golden color. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> All right. Not bad. No. It finishes a little hot. Not like hot like the Wee Beastie did, <laughs> but like uh, kind of like more in the sinus area. Like you kind of get like a little pew mm -hmm. over the top. I am enjoying the, the medium body. Okay. Um, for a price point for this scotch, back when Talisker rolled out with this, they were aiming at $70 a bottle. Um, right now it's sitting right around 40 so a very affordable scotch. Okay, for, at $40, I would say it's good scotch, worth the buy. It has a little bit of pepper, uh, not as smooth as some of the other ones that we've tried, but um, if I'm going to do a comparison between this and the Wee BC, this has a beat by a mile. Yeah, absolutely pretty well done. I would agree. Things you might enjoy with this scotch? Maybe a carrot cake. There you go. That <laughs> would be fun. A carrot cake would be very fun with this. Um, 
I would even say probably medium to mild cigar if we're going to do cigars. Like, if it ever stops snowing in Colorado. Yeah, uh, we're facing another snowstorm. Another currently. spring snowstorm. I enjoy this one. You know, it's not too bad for a uh, lower price point um, and the weather outside, you know? Perfect for the weather outside. Yeah. Being that uh, the weather outside and the spring uh, snowstorm here in April 20th or <laughs> April 19th, whatever day it is. Um, what did you think of dinner? Where did we go? All right. So this evening, Noah and I ventured over to the Meatball Eatery where um, they've got some, actually, I, I think some great food, a fabulous happy hour for the price um, and, and a great atmosphere. Yeah, I love the atmosphere. I love the way uh, the inside was designed. Uh, by looking on the outside, that zigzag with the Meatball Eatery, I do like the brick look of the Meatball Eatery, but the zigzag side of it, I, I don't get it, but uh, when you walk inside, <laughs> right? When you walk inside, it looks it looks pretty nice. So like, uh, it look, I would say it's pretty pretty kind of classy inside, you know. Um, and I was surprised by the food. I thought the food was uh, very good, and uh, I would highly recommend going there. Yeah, we had the calamari. Ooh, yeah, the calamari was really tasty, and the meatball char charcuterie 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 yeah. plate. Yeah, I think that, didn't they just call it the meatball sample plate on yeah. the <laughs> happy hour menu? Yeah, so on the happy hour menu, you could get the same thing, but it's just called the meatball sample plate, which is actually a better deal to do if you do uh, go over there. Go over there for happy hour. You save about like five bucks on that. For sure. So instead of paying $20, you're paying like 14 Yeah, and, and with that, you get six meatballs, two shrimp with an Alfredo sauce. Yeah, that was good. That was good. And Not as good as the other ones. Oh, I know your favorite was the beef. So you get yeah. the two beef and then two pork. Yeah, I did like the beef one. I thought the beef one was really good. Uh, the bread was really nice. It was like, what was that, kind of like a garlic bread or something? Garlic bread with a plate or a bowl, if you will, filled with sauce and cheese, yes. Yeah, that was good. That little was tasty. Cheese balls. Little, little mozzarella cheese balls, yeah. And Very then the good. calamari. Calamari, okay. yeah. It wasn't rubbery. It was nice and good. It was... Had great breading on there. The sauce you dipped it in was good. Well, well done. Well done. If you do happen, if you live in uh, Centennial area or Aurora, or is that Inglewood on the other side there? It's such a confusing area. It's yeah. right there at Arapahoe and I twenty five off of Clinton Street. Yeah. Okay. So I twenty five and Clinton Street. Uh, if you guys happen to go in there, you're not going to get a discount, but uh, <laughs> let them know that you heard about them here on uh, Scotch Hour, and maybe. Maybe if we're lucky, if enough people go in there and say that they heard heard about them through us, we might be able to do a show there or something. That's that's kind of like the hope eventually down the line. That's right, and that would be a blast. They do have a full bar and a lot of uh, libations we didn't partake in tonight because we were coming back here to do our scotch hour, but they do have some great drinks, craft drinks as well. Yeah, it looked like their drink menu was pretty well, pretty well made. And everything's supposed to be, what, homemade and made from scratch? Yeah, family-owned, homemade there, uh, and um, tasty, like all fresh ingredients. It was I thought it was a great meal. Yeah, I enjoyed it very much. Yeah. All right, thank you, Meatball Eatery. Thank you, Meatball Eatery. Cheers to you. Cheers. Any other flavors you get out there? I'm getting something a little sweet. I was going to say butterscotch, but I'm not sure. It's very smooth on the palate right now. Yeah. All right. So we talked about our previous week. Uh, Any interesting experiences in your life you would like to share? Well, we're going to talk about previous week, right? (laughs) I guess we should probably talk a little bit about... uh, Smarter challenges. Smarter challenges. <laughs> <laughs> so last week, uh, the challenge that I put out there was to read from the master key system. I did meet the challenge. All right, good. I met the challenge. I, I would have met the challenge anyways. I already know the book uh, somewhat. So uh, chapter it was chapter four. Um, uh, I kind of got it like at the very tail end because I said two or three at first and then four later on. <laughs> 
So what did you think of that, um, what you read? I really enjoyed it. So a couple of the key points, and I took a few notes because I wanted to hear is, you know, what is thought? energy and in this case they're saying spiritual energy how is it carried by vibration how is it given vitality by the law of love how does it take form by the law of growth what is the secret of its creative power its spiritual activity what is the seek uh, what is the silence a physical stillness that one uh, was very impactful to me that little piece and then of what value is it? And it's the first step towards self-control. And I think that's very interesting because many different ways, not to the depth of this literature here or this version of it, but is, you know, some of my old favorite sayings, he who says the least hears the most. Right. Um, so part of that silence. And then also, man, like if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Thank you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, to kind of go along that uh, that train of thought, usually I uh, I found that those who are the smartest people in the room usually tend to speak the least because they're not having to prove what they know. Yeah, definitely more confidence. Yeah. Very true. So did you uh, ponder on who you really were? Because, I mean, as that states in that, in that, uh, in that chapter. Who am I? Yeah, because it talks about the I, right? The eye is not the body. The eye is not the mind. So who are you? You know, it made me think, it did make me think of who am I, um, what am I, and it reminded me of uh, the movie Interstellar. So all connecting uh, through space and time, if you will, and that there is an energy out there that we share or don't share with others, depending on the energies, different vibrations, different wavelengths different frequencies that we live by and therefore attract others with those similar frequencies, work well with people with those similar frequencies, um, goals, thoughts, and really much like choosing a good mentor, surrounding yourself by great people. And great people can be people who you can teach, but also people you're going to learn from. Uh, that's a piece of it too, surrounding yourself with positive energies, people who want to do great things, um, and, and that is definitely something that I believe in. I would agree with everything you said there. Um, I, if I remember correctly, and that chapter four, he said this is the beginning stages of uh, learning how to manifest your life, right? Or how to manifest things into your life. Because once you learn that mastery of that uh, you can't control the body, you can't control what you think, from that point forward... Once you've learned to master that, then you can start manifesting stuff in your life. I, am I? You am are. I, you are correct. Um, and furthermore, really, one of the examples was how you react. Um, so again, part of that silence. Do you say something if someone makes a snide comment, or do you stay silent because it's at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's not going to negative Im negatively impact you because you're not going to let it negatively impact you. And that's a big piece of it is how do you react in certain situations and with that not reacting or acting negatively. So something bad happens. It happens all the time. It's snowing right now. We were going to grill steak and lobster tonight. That's a bad one. Um, did we let it get us down? No. We're like, no. hey, man, we've been talking about meatball eatery. Let's use this positive energy. Yeah, it's snowing. Let's go. Let's go have an experience. Yeah, well, let's even look at take take that for example, right? Um, we knew it was going to snow today. Um, it was quite of a challenge because we have to decide like whether or not if we're going to uh, record our podcast this uh, this evening or not. Yeah, we do uh, not reside closely, and you make quite a commute to come down here. Yeah, it's probably what forty five minutes an hour every easily. Commute. Yeah, easily uh, so, with no traffic. <laughs> yeah, with no traffic. So. Uh, to decide whether or not to drive in bad weather, uh, is, is kind of a little bit of a challenge. So we had to, like, uh, we just kind of, I think we looked at it and, uh, I think we made a smart decision of how we went about it, talked back and forth, used positive energy to figure out what we're going to do and, uh, and it happened. So here we are rec recording like we, uh, like we wanted to. Yeah. So, um, from, from what you read of the book, I've read it. I would highly recommend uh, someone to actually read the book and uh, do it uh, and do the tasks as it says in the book. If you do, if you do it, if you do it that way, it will take 
a while to to do it, and it will take some commitment. From what you've read so far, would you recommend the book to to someone? I I am planning on reading more, and of what I've read so far, yes, I would, uh, particularly for any of those who are struggling with or really want to continue to adapt and master their own self, their actions, their beliefs, um, how they react and what they do to get a positive reaction. It's uh, another one of the points was you have to give to get. Yeah. And uh, Pena has made some comments in the past. I saw Pena, short- for those who don't know Pena, who's Pena. <laughs> He is a very, very wealthy man, um, a billionaire. With this, he goes and gives a presentation, and he's talking to a lot of, I would say he classifies them as millennials, um, do-gooders, people who want to do great things, who want to have a positive impact, and he's looking around the room, and he's like, (laughs) he he, he cusses a lot in this particular video clip, so you may not want to show it to your 12-year-old, but in here, he's saying, Man, you want to do good for those that are hungry. You want to do good for those that need help. Guess what? You got to make money if you're going to make a positive impact because it's going to take money to feed all these people. So you're going to have to go and give time, give energy to get the money you want to get the results you want. But in that, it is kind of full circle, very much so full circle, in that you're giving work to make a positive big impact and at the same time making a very big positive impact on yourself i think it kind of goes back to the old thought process here of uh you have to make sure you're on uh, sound footing before you can help out somebody else because if you're drowning you're not gonna be able to save someone else who's drowning yeah so you, you have to make sure you're in a good position before you can help out anybody else yeah it's good it's good to have that well wish of like yeah let's help out everybody but if you are not in a good position, then you really should not be helping out anybody else until you get into a solid position. Likewise, with our country right now, we're not in a solid position. As much as we would like to help out everybody, I don't think we pro- we probably should not be until we're, we are on sound footing again. I fully agree. But um, So, good. I'm glad you uh, enjoyed the... Uh, the smarter challenges, right? Smarter challenges. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I thought the I thought that was a really good book. Uh, I do have another one lined up for uh, next week when it's my turn again. It, it's another kind of like self improvement one, um, but I, I do think if people actually do that challenge along with this one here, I think it uh, it might sh- it might uh, help promote some that positive energy you're talking about. Uh, that's excellent because we all go through instances, at least I do. I guess I shouldn't say we all, I shouldn't speak for others, but we all go through instances where we're faced by things and it brings us stress. Oh, yeah. And there are different types of stress. There's good stress and there's bad stress. Um, but anytime for me that I feel any little bit of anxiety, I know that's a negative stress. That's a bad bad stress. That's something I need to impact immediately to change or turn around. And with this book, it it makes it sound like it's giving keys and clues on ways to avoid that at all. Um, Staying ahead of it, if you will, before you're impacted by that terrible feeling of anxiety because you didn't do X or you didn't do Y and really just making sure, hey, I'm going to step in. We're going to deal with this bad stress immediately because the good stress is okay. I've done what I can. It's good stress now because I'm excited, but I may not get this promotion or I'm excited, but this may not go the way I want versus bad stress. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have a roof over my head tomorrow. I bought XRP at a dollar eighty, and it went down to a dollar thirty. Just kidding, I did not. But <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. I bought mine like near the twenty cent rent mark, so I'm good. Yeah, you're still you're still golden. I'm sitting there for the first time for for our listeners who haven't heard our previous podcast. Um, Noah's very big on cryptocurrencies and some. i have not yes on some cryptocurrencies and i have not taken that plunge yet uh I'm, I'm seriously considering it but man i'm watching it for the first time really wondering where will this go um anyone who took that plunge when bitcoin was pennies is now a billionaire so it might be worth the risk could be could be 
I'm not saying it is or it isn't, but I think it might be. Yeah. I mean, obviously, that's why I've I've kind of leveraged myself a little bit into it. Absolutely. So, uh, well, I think that was pretty good. A recap of last week's Smarter Challenges. Um, I have a question for you. Yeah, what's your question? Shoot, Noah. Shoot. Shoot. That's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a great word for what I'm about to ask you. Are you pro second amendment? I am pro second amendment. And there are a lot of reasons for this. Uh, a big piece of it is actually fact-based beyond uh, the original constitutional rights, which I, I believe very strongly that the constitution is not meant to be changed or amended um, any further than it already has been in, in the sense of especially the early amendments. Um, the second amendment is, is a big and important one. Um, you know, a lot of people are talking right now, there's a lot going on in the world and a lot of it's negative. Um, but there's a lot of positive too, but with some of the negative, a lot of people are talking about, um, the second amendment and the right to bear arms, gun control. This is a tough one for me because if we allow, uh, certain parties to jump in and um, uh, change this amendment, if you will, um, take away some of those rights, then who's to say the next amendment they don't go approach is freedom of speech? And all of a sudden now you can't speak because some people said the wrong things and created a riot and now your speech is limited well, as well. I can say they've, they've already attacked that. It's true. They're, they've breached or attacked all those subjects, but I... I don't want to lose any of those rights. I don't think our children should lose those rights. We shouldn't lose those rights. I do think that protections have been put in place to safeguard some people who really just honestly should not be possessors of firearms, but um, there are different reasons for that as well. So you are one of the people who believe that uh, the Second Amendment is not for hunting. It's for protection. You know, it, you could say either way. For me, I base it back all the way to when the Constitution was written. And, yeah, for me, it is largely about protection. Okay, good. Protection from what? Um, enemies, foreign, and here. Domestic. That's right. Okay, well, I am also a uh, pro-Second Amendment person. Um, I never really owned a gun for most of my life. Um, in fact, you know, I was never like really for it or really against it. What changed your mind? I'll get to that. Here All, in right. A second. All right. So, you know, being that, you know, I grew up in the city, I felt pretty much safe for most of my life. I grew up in Denver and, uh, or Denver metropolitan area, just like he did. Yeah. Uh, I never really felt like too worried about my life. And so I never really felt a total need for a gun, um, or a firearm if you want. And so uh, what really changed my mind was I was actually involved in an active shooter situation. So uh, I'm not really sure how well you know um, Salt Lake at all, but uh, I was in downtown Salt Lake uh, going northbound on State Street. And uh, the intersection there was 500 South and State. So to the northwest corner is a federal courthouse and I was on the north uh, or the southeast corner next to a uh, I think it's a car lot I think it's like a Toyota car lot right. maybe, <laughs> maybe so um, on uh, April the 8th of 2019 uh, there was this gentleman who was driving around in a pickup truck he had robbed a couple of convenience stores and he actually at that particular point in time he was in the same intersection that I was at and uh, he stopped his car, his truck, the white truck in the middle of the intersection. I was pretty much like right where the crosswalk was. There was a vehicle in front of me and uh, I saw the guy stop his white truck. He took basically one step out of the truck. I saw him lift up his AR 15 and I could see him pull his trigger three times. Pop, pop, pop. And uh, when he fired, when he pulled out his uh, AR-15 and fired and, and fired those three shots, he was shooting eastbound, so in my direction. 
and it would have been right in front of the car in front of me, uh, next to me to the left, because I was in the far right lane, was a school bus. And as soon as I saw that pop up, I was like, what the hell am I going to do? Um, and luckily for me, like, I mean, he could have, I was definitely in the line of sight, uh, line of fire or like his line of sight. If he would have just did just a little bit of a movement, he could have uh, shot his gun towards, uh, uh, his AR 15 towards us. And, um, and I was just thinking like, Oh, like if, if I have to, I'm, I'm jumping out of the car, which means my car would probably would have drove cause I, I was in gear and I would have like hit like right behind the engine block of the, of the school bus. So I was already looking at the situational awareness of what I was going to do if I saw him turning my way. And uh, it was, it was kind of, it was a scary moment. Not going to lie. Uh, luckily I had been to a fi firing range before. So the gunshots didn't like scare me as much as like probably the person in front of me. But as soon as he jumped back into his truck and drove off, the guy in front of me pulled off. I pulled off right behind him to make sure he was okay because he was definitely just, he was definitely distraught. Yeah. And at that moment, uh, well, we were starting to talk, and I was like, hey, are you okay? You okay? We heard another fire, you know, like more of gun, gunfire. We didn't know at that point. We didn't know whether or not there was a, a second shooter or if it's the same guy just a little bit further down because it's downtown. So uh, the, uh, you know, the gunfire was just, it was just echoing all over the place. And so right when that went off, I just kind of knelt down to try to look around, see where it was coming from. And that guy just started running right over to the federal courthouse. And I'm like, boy, you're crazy, dude. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, like, I think the worst thing you could do um, is to just immediately run. I think you need to stay calm and be able to look at what's going on. So you can make an, a you know, make make a sound decision, but I will tell you that this was downtown, right across the street from a federal courthouse, and it still took the cops like five minutes to get there. And I was like, "Wow, if it takes the cops five minutes to get to like where a federal a federal courthouse is when there's a when there's gunfire, what are they gonna do if there's gunfire at my house?" take 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, multiple hours. I was like, no, at this point in time, I became very pro second amendment. I'm like, everybody needs to own a gun. Everybody needs to train on how to use their firearm. I think that's very important in a key as well. I think it is no different than say an automobile. Don't get your license until you know how to drive, take some <laughs> classes for sure. And I'm sure knowing, you know, exactly. you took at least one class. Yeah. I okay, did. good. Yep, I even got. I even took my uh, concealed carry permit class. I uh, um, when I bought my firearm, I um, I the place I bought it from was actually uh, where they sell used uh, law enforcement um, firearms, and so one of the people there they do uh, training. So I hired them for an hour to teach me. Excellent. Good. So I would definitely say though, after that experience, very pro Second Amendment, and. Uh, because you just don't know what's going to happen. And it seems ridiculous when you start hearing, like, people saying that they want to get rid of police. Okay, you get rid of police, who's going to protect you? Or yeah, if, you get, yeah. if you get rid of the Second Amendment, okay, great. Do you think the criminals are going to, like, obey that law? They're criminals for a reason. They do not follow the law. Yeah. So if you outlaw guns, criminals are still going to have guns. So all you're doing is you're taking it away from law-abiding citizens and you put them at risk to not only the uh, the criminals but any kind of uh, any kind of tyranny that might come down from the government. That's just my opinion. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough subject because there are so many people that have been impacted. I have not been impacted as you have. Thankfully, I have never had such an experience. I'm glad you're okay, and I'm sure it was not an easy one to deal with. Um, there are a lot of people that do have those experiences, and uh, it's a touchy subject for sure. Yeah, it is, because like, there are some people I, that I've also met that have been in, uh, in an active shooter situation, but they feel totally opposite of me. They're like, everyone should not have a gun. 
And I'm like, uh, and, and I keep asking, I'm like, so what's going to happen if someone breaks into your house who is a criminal and has a gun? Oh, if if you're not allowed to own one as a as a law abiding citizen, do you really believe the police are going to get there in time? I don't know. We can only hope so. You can. Only, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. In my experience, I don't know how long it took him to get to where I was at. And that was downtown by a federal building. Five minutes. A lot can happen in five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll probably be dead. Well, we hope not. (laughs) We definitely hope not. So, and then like here, right here in this uh, screen, you can see the guy's white truck. Uh, The cops, uh, if you ever watch, if you ever like search for it um, and you see the uh, body camera video, like the cops just light this dude up. Like, like I think it was like over a hundred shots into yeah. him. Well, they took care of business. <laughs> hey, here's what matters. You're okay. Yeah. Right. So we've decided we're both pro Second Amendment. Very much, so, I would say. I think that's a good place to leave this topic for now. Think so. I do. Do you have anything else? And I shouldn't jump because, I, again, I wasn't the one impacted as you were. Did you have anything else you wanted to cover really quickly with this? No, not really. I just think uh, people probably, like, I understand why people are afraid of guns, but I think what you, I think it's just like anything. Once you've um, learned how to handle the firearm, how to respect it, um, and you take care of it correctly, um, I don't think they're that scary. Obviously, that's a, it is a deadly weapon, but you know, a spoon could be a deadly weapon. I mean, if you use a spoon improperly, you could dig out somebody's eyeball. Lots of things you can do with a spoon. <laughs> Maybe eat a meatball. <laughs> Maybe eat a meatball or an eyeball. There you go. <laughs> but uh, I feel like that's in a movie somewhere. <laughs> it could be. It really could be. Uh, talking about eyeballs. Oh, and I didn't. I should probably pull this up here. Um, one of our, uh, listeners. Yes. Her name is Leslie. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, I forget Leslie's last name. Um, unfortunately for, uh, Leslie, uh, she does not live here. Um, she lives in, uh, Arizona. All right. And, um, she turned us on to a, in the comments, a a bar. Okay. That has a horror theme to it. All right. So I uh, I shot that information over to you. And what did you think of it? Horror bar. H-O-R-R-O-R, not W-H-O-R-E. Um, <laughs> horror bar. <laughs> it actually looks pretty interesting. It could definitely be a fun experience. Um, as you were describing it to me, you were letting me know that weekly they do movies there, it sounds like, once a week or maybe more. Um, but they do have different events that go on. Yeah, I was noticing on the uh, Instagram and Leslie, um, I told you I, I'd give you a shout out. And when we actually go visit this bar, we'll give you a shout out there too. But uh, thank you for recommending this. It really looks like a cool bar on Instagram. Uh, when we were at dinner, I pulled up the Instagram page. And uh, yeah, they have, they show, like, they show horror films at the bar. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, it is something we should definitely check out. Um, I'm not, you know, I'd have to be there looking at some of these pictures that you're showing right now. I can't tell if I love the vibe or if if the environment's not quite for me. It, well, it's a tough one because you know me; I like dark environments. <laughs> okay, do you like horror? Do you like, hor- do you, do you like uh, dark films? Do you like horror films? You know, for the most part, I do. But you and I, you know, since since as long as I've known you, you and I have had a pretty dark sense of humor and are right. not, are not often impacted the same way as everyone with these things, but. In in general, yes. Yeah, I, I remember one movie where <laughs> we were both laughing at, and uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> people did not appreciate that in that movie theater. Hey, there were two of us laughing. It's not like it was only one person. As I'm saying, <laughs> like we was, we were both laughing. Yeah, I, yeah, I do remember that too. <laughs> great film, by the way. <laughs> it was a great movie, and uh, I think yeah, it won some awards. <laughs> it did win a lot of awards. Yeah, it we're going to leave that title out, <laughs> all right? This, uh, uh, it was a, not it is a historically based type of movie. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I think uh, people might think lesser of us if we actually said the name of the movie. Yeah, but in, in general, uh, because I haven't had any traumatic experiences, horror movies are something I do often enjoy. So do I. So to kind of give you a hand, like uh, Leslie, uh, I, uh, she was one of the people I was training uh, that I talked about from this past week. And I was talking about, uh, uh, um, it's called uh, Jumping Juvenile. This is, um, sorry guys, I'm going to talk a little bit about insurance here. Life insurance <laughs> oh in particular. <laughs> so I need another drink. Yeah, and we all do. <laughs> uh, so Jumping Juvenile, it's, uh, if you think about like Gerber Life, uh, I'm sure you probably heard about it. It's like where you buy life insurance on kids. Yeah, I think I get flyers about once a week. My kids aren't kids anymore. They're <laughs> almost out of high school, actually. Not so there. anyways, with Jumping Juvenile, there's a, uh, a rider that goes along with it, something that you attach onto a life insurance policy to make it better. It's called the uh, payer benefits. Okay. So the way it kind of works, I, I and I'm going to tell you like how I describe it to my class, and then you can kind of like see why Leslie uh, – Decided to uh, tell us about this bar. All right. So uh, I talk about how um, with the payer benefits, um, the way it works is that if someone becomes disabled, then um, they have to pay the, the premiums for the next six months and the seventh month. If they're still disabled, they'll be reimbursed. And then the, the policy stays in force until the child turns 21 or the person who bought the policy is able to go back to work. Also, with this pair of benefits, if someone happens to die, the policy will stay in force until the child turns 21. So the way I describe it is that you have grandpa on a Christmas Eve night who's stumbling home drunk from the bar. All right, grandpa. All right, grandpa. Grandpa, <laughs> grandpa has been joining us. Well, that's how bar. grandma got run over by the reindeer. <laughs> it was actually uh, his truck. <laughs> <laughs> so grandpa's been joining us drinking scotch. I don't include that in my story, but. Oh, but anyways, grandpa's uh, grandpa's lit. <laughs> grandpa's lit, stumbling home, and uh, Santa Claus and the reindeer are on a sugar high. They're like totally high off of sugar, right? They're like, because you know how much sugar they eat, like all those cookies and crap. I've seen Elf, man, great movie, and yes, there are all of yes. the sugar-based food groups: <laughs> <laughs> syrup, sugar. <laughs> so you know, Grandpa and Rudolph and all of them—they're all, or not Grandpa, but. Uh, Santa Claus and Rudolph and all the reindeer, they're all on a sugar high. So they come swooping down. They don't see Grandpa. Grandpa is stumbling, and he doesn't see them. And then they just ram into Grandpa, and he goes flying 50 feet in the air, and he has a broken leg with a, you know, uh, you know, with a bone that snaps out and blood squirting all over the place, and his hip gets busted and stuff like that. And so he's disabled, right? So that, that would be the disabled part. Now... If, let's just say, this time around, Grandpa's stumbling again. He's totally drunk, off his off his rocker. And uh, once again, uh, this time, uh, you know, Santa Claus and the reindeer, they're all on a sugar high. But they're not paying, like, well, they are paying attention. They see Grandpa, but a little bit too late. So, you know, Santa Claus pulls up on the reins and tries to swerve. But this time when he swerves, the, sl- the blade of the sleigh decapitates Grandpa. And his head goes flying. His body just starts stumbling around, like blood squirting out all over the place, and he and he falls right in front of this snowman. And the snowman goes from a white snowman into a red bloody snowman with blood all over the place. All right. So that's kind of how I describe that. And so I, that, and then I also talk about something about like how someone gets run over by a, a lawnmower or gets their hand caught in there and their and their fingers go flying out and blood squirting all over the place. So Leslie thought this would be a great idea. To show us this bar. And I thought, huh, I never heard of it. It might be kind of cool to go check it out. I think we should. I think we should. And uh, a special shout out to uh, Leslie, too, not just for recommending this bar, but uh, um, she did have like a loss in her family or was about to. So mm. uh, I just want to say uh, our condolences go out to you. Absolutely. All right. Next topic. Yeah. Have or you, unless you got anything, unless you got anything else. I'm no, I, I am interested uh, in checking it out. As we were looking through the videos, I noticed all the DVDs and uh, basic format movies they had up on their walls, on their shelves, mixed in amongst the different liqueurs and liquors. Um, and it, it was interesting to me to see that because it's definitely one of those 
um, trendy things with records, but I, you know, people still make fun of me for buying my DVDs and Blu Ray. <laughs> oh, he's he, he talking about me, dude. Anybody, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, you're one of them. <laughs> there you go. All right, all right. So, uh, if someone does, like, if you guys happen to be us there, if you listen to our podcast and you happen to go to this horror, the horror bar there off of, I think it's off of uh, Colfax, yes. If you happen to go there, once again, if you could do us a favor, let them know that you heard about their bar on uh, Scotch Hour. I don't think they'll give you any discount. They'll probably wonder who the heck we are anyways. But uh, if we can uh, start getting our name out there to some of the local businesses, uh, hopefully we might be able to do like some fun events, some fun Bring events, or in. maybe even be able to set up discounts in the future for the people who listen to us. And uh, that's that's what we're hoping for anyways. Yes. Okay, one more thing that I got to talk about. All right. Wait a minute. We're going to step back just for a minute. Have you seen the movie Interstellar? Uh, Which one is that? Uh, Matthew McConaughey, Time and Space Travel. No, I have not. I highly recommend it. I had a couple of friends who recommended it to me. One uh, was my friend... Um, who since has moved to Washington, Sterling. And, I, you know, I waited like two years to watch this movie. When I finally did watch it, I, I watched it. And, man, it it impacted me for days, and to this point it still has. But it, it speaks a lot to um, some of the pieces with this book in a different level, in a different light, with energies and how... When you say this book, what book are you talking about? So that way they know. Uh, I'm talking about the master key system. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you said this book, but like they can't see yeah, it on the camera. Yeah, a master key system. <laughs> um, this book that we were talking about earlier, uh, um, master key <laughs> system. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> so, master key wasabi. System. Oh, wasabi. With that, though, Interstellar very much in line with the energies piece, how people have different energies and the attractions and how uh, individuals' energies aren't always separated by simple space or simple time. There may still be connections. I I do recommend if you get a chance, watch it. I'm not so sure I'm going to make that your challenge. You got off too easy with Romeo and Juliet last time um, because that's such a great movie and I already knew you loved it, but uh, we will. I, I do recommend it. So, I will check it out. Okay. All right. I won't make any promises when, but I will. All right. Um, we were talking about this earlier. What do you think about alpaca? Alpaca. I think it's. Uh, <laughs> it can be amazing for a sweater. Yeah. So I'm wearing I'm wearing my alpaca sweater here. I got uh, I got it as a Christmas gift. Nice. Yeah, and it's freaking warm. I'm, like, sweating. I'll bet. Yeah, I, when you walked in, I noticed it. Um, great cable knit sweater, great color, um, and that is exactly what I know about alpaca is that it's warm. Yeah, so while we were out and about earlier, I uh, we went to the when I'm, meatball like, eatery. in the snow, <laughs> and you're, like, sweating. Yeah, I'm like, I was, like, I was pretty warm. But now, like, we're inside. I'm, like, ooh, this is hot. <laughs> So, uh, but anyways, uh, I, I know my, uh, my mom and, uh, my stepdad, Dennis, uh, they picked this up over here at the nice. alpaca store in, uh, Netherland. Excellent. Uh, my mom's actually really good friends with this guy, uh, Roy, who's the owner of the store. Nice. And, uh, I even have some alpaca socks. Those things are so warm. I got okay. a couple pairs of those. Uh, they're like 20 bucks or 30 bucks a, a pop, but they're super warm. Excellent. Uh, some of my favorite socks are actually wool socks, not alpaca per uh-huh. se. Uh, but wool socks, uh, you know, I think wool got a bad reputation in the past because of old technology and the way that it was woven and stretched out and couldn't be washed. And now you've got smart wool and lots of companies, Ralph Lauren, making wool socks and they breathe amazingly well. They hold their shape now. Uh, my smart wool socks are absolutely fantastic. Nice. I don't have any smart wool, so- wool socks, but I will say if you like alpaca, like hats, sweaters, blankets, uh, give uh, give Roy a visit. I, I think. Have you ever been up to the store? I have not. Ever, no. And Ned? No. Yeah, he's a super nice guy. Uh, he has a really awesome uh, store. It's kind of tiny. 
Uh, these li- he has like little tiny like this alpaca that he has right there. <laughs> he has like little tiny ones. They are so soft. They're yeah, like super super soft. Like uh, uh, my parents got uh, my stepsister a little tiny one, and that thing is like the softest little thing that you've ever felt. Nice. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, like th- those coats and the sweaters, the hats, uh, socks, blankets from that are made out of alpaca are incredible. Nice. Outstanding. Seem to be. I guess they're supposed to be good creatures too. I don't know. I have I don't. no idea. You know, <laughs> I know they're not ostriches running around in packs, like trying to uh, kill you. Yeah, those things are evil. looking. the faces, <laughs> beaks. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> no go. With that, you yeah. know, I, I read an interesting article. There's, um, I don't know if you ever, much like movies, I also get newsprint still on paper, so some magazines. And um, I recently read an article uh, with Josh Brolin Who's that? in the movie The Rake. So he was uh, probably most famous for his role in No Country for Old Men. Never seen that. But he's the older brother in The Goonies. I mean, come on, man. You've seen The Goonies. I've seen The Goonies. All right. <laughs> uh, was it some truffle? <laughs> shuffle, the shuffle, truffle, the shuffle, truffle, whatever. Truffle, shuffle, <laughs> truffle, shuffle. You know what? Talking about the Goonies, um, I uh, it's uh, I never knew how much adult humor was in the Goonies. Oh yeah, it, it was like like I didn't really realize that until like so I was working uh, as a. Uh, as a wine clerk at a uh, liquor store in downtown. Okay. Uh, right off of like uh, 12th and, I think it was like 12th and Broadway, right around there. Anyways, uh, this one lady, she was actually really hot looking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, her and I, like, we kind of hit it off. Like, we we're talking, we we're, you know, chopping it up and everything like that. And, and uh, she invited me to go see the Goonies with her. Nice. So I went to go see the a midnight showing of the Goonies downtown at one of the those uh, one of those movie theaters, like the old movie theaters. Okay. Off of like I'm not sure if it's off of Lincoln or whatever. So uh, I was there, and she brought her two kids. All right. So I was like, all right, whatever. You know, obviously, you know, you're a little bit older. You know, you're gonna come across people who have kids, right? All right. And uh, <laughs> so I was in the movie theater with her, her two kids, and. I never like up until that point. Oh yeah, I never even knew like how dirty the Goonies was. Yeah, it's... when I Willie, come on, <laughs> <laughs> that was the name of the pirate. When I Willie, yeah. oh yeah, I never I, as a kid, I never caught on to that. Oh man. <laughs> All right. Well, at least you caught on to yeah. I caught on there. His <laughs> mom's favorite part of the statue, right? Like the oh, kids yeah. all know this. <laughs> That's my mom's most favorite part. Yeah, the little the porcelain dick. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Oops! You erase that. We're just gonna back it on. Actually, I'm not gonna erase. I don't think that's. I don't think that's. Uh, I don't think they'll get us a strike on YouTube. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They'll know what you're talking about. It's the only part that gets glued <laughs> upside down. <laughs> <laughs> you can just even make one of your like amazing hang your, hang your bike now. Yeah. Boom, <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> it's, it's put upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Something's standing at attention. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah that movie though is great, but absolutely, you know, it's no different than National Lampoon's Vacation the original one true, true. oh man uh, so a lot of adult content there but you know things have changed and i think it's important that kids be around that to a proper extent um and i think the goonies is absolutely appropriate for kids of all ages it's well done actually it wasn't uh, like i'm not saying it's a bad movie i just saying like i was like totally yeah, naive to it until like, like i was like not until you're on a date next to a, you mentioned she was a hot woman with two kids, and you're like, what's these kids going to think of this movie? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was, like, totally surprised. I was like, oh. <laughs> it is a good movie. Uh, so many good movies from that time period. Top Gun, The Goonies. 
I think oh, you know man. another show should be is maybe talking about like some eighties movies yeah. like uh like the Breakfast Club. Oh my goodness. Or Sixteen Candles, the dog needs food. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a really good movie too. Um yeah, yeah. absolutely. There's some uh uh, better off dead. Oh yes, yes, John Cusack. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what this mountain's made out of? This is pure snow. <laughs> Do you know the street value of this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great movie, absolutely. And again, though, lots of adult content in every single one of those. Um, well done and uh, great for its time. <laughs> Because uh, uh, you were also talking about uh, talking about weird science. Too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have got to do a show on these movies. And weird science is a big one. I'm really thinking, you know, like if you were to you, you know, throw in a curveball here, if you were to talk about weird science and you've got the two Kelly characters. The Brock? Uh, I was actually, I mean. Are you talking about Michael Anthony Hall and his buddy? Yes. The two main characters. Which one are you and which one am I? <laughs> I don't. I know I'm not Chet, <laughs> which is the older brother. Yeah, you know when he wants to be Chet. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Who do you think? Oh, uh, man, I'd I'd love to think I was, uh, and, you know, Hall. But Are they Michael uh, Hall. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's tough. You know, uh, one of my passions in life is a Ferrari. So the fact that they slid one of those in there. Was pretty fantastic as well. I love I love when they go to that all black bar. <laughs> oh yeah, the blues bar. Yeah, that was amazing. I want to find a bar like that. Where can I find a bar like that and just deal with some totally cool people? I mean that. Like the closest thing I've I've seen here is a jazz club, and it was not the same. There was no brass in the the club when I went, and I was very <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, those were some good movies. Yeah, we'll definitely have to do like a dedicate a full show to those. Yes, man, I, I don't know like how many movies can you really cover in an hour though. There's so much. I don't detail. know, but I think I think you could do like uh, sixteen candles. Uh, you got? Do you throw risky business in there? I think you have you to. You have to. <laughs> Risky business. I think you throw in there. I think you throw in the Breakfast Club because you yes. have to do. You, you got to do the Breakfast Club. Yeah, absolutely. Proper challenge. That was smart challenge. Uh, okay. Smarter challenge. <laughs> Proper, smarter, whatever. I, I just always think about snatch when I'm making that comment and the dogs and the bunnies and all. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So with the, my challenge here, and, and this is a little bit about vulnerability. And for those of you out there um, who have experienced this with me, anyone that I mentor, I typically get to a point where I ask them the question, what's your favorite type of shoes? And then I asked them to r tell me why this pair of shoes, it could be Ferragamas, it could be Nike, it could be Adidas, it could be Kohan, um, it might be Timberlands. So what's your favorite type of shoes? Why are they your favorite type of shoes? And I want five reasons. And then I asked them, what's your brand? What do you want to be known for? You're telling me this is your favorite pair of shoes, so I'm assuming there are going to be some similarities within. I like Oxfords. There you go. I'm <laughs> fine with that. Brokes, not Oxfords, by the way. <laughs> no, I like Oxfords. Okay. I don't like Brokes. I don't like the little like designs and stuff. Um, and uh, I do like Kuhans a lot. Okay. I'd so, say they're they're like because I don't know. I just for whatever reason. Um, they do fit my feet pretty well. They're yeah. really comfortable, um, and they're nice. Uh, they made with pretty good leather. Uh, yeah, I, I love the soles. Although recently, uh, I had my I had one pair about a year ago resold, and uh, when I had them resold, I had them do the the rubber middle. Yeah, so that way I wouldn't slip. Anymore. I believe in that. I especially with modern technology, a lot has changed with what they can and, and do with shoes in general. So that is though my challenge is next week, bring to me, if it remains Cole Hahn. It is, I already told you, yeah, I already, right, I already right, your challenge, right. I think. I, no man, you gotta tell me what are the five things you like about them and then the real piece, the real challenge is what's your brand and what five things do you You know what my brand is, or? it's never changed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you get to share it's that Ralph next week, all right. <laughs> You know, I like Ralph Lauren. But what's your brand? What five things do you want to be known for? If you're making those shoes or if you're making a shirt or if you are 
this person across the table from me. Uh, like trainer, all, all my by now shirts are Ralph Lauren. I, I know. I, I'm not talking about your brand. I'm talking <laughs> about your brand. What do you want to be known for? Oh, you're talking about me, like yes, what, my you, personal what brand. Is Noah's brand. So you uh, like you like branding yourself. Yes, exactly. What if if I'm going to be selling Noah? What am I selling? So I want you next week to come with the five things you're you're wanting me to sell you for. And I will do the same. Hell, if I know. I have no idea. If I knew that, I probably would be, I'd probably be, I'm, I'm not sure if I'd be doing the podcast right now. You, you could, <laughs> or maybe you'd be doing a better podcast. Uh, you know, we, we keep getting all these new gizmos and gadgets, and we can't quite get the wireless mics to work just yet. We will master that. Oh, yeah, we did. We got, <laughs> yeah. well, so I, I, I put I put something out on Facebook, just so you know, I put something out on, uh, out on Facebook saying that, uh, that from our first episode to now, we I like we started off with one mic, right? Yes, good time. Then, uh, then we went to two mics mm-hmm. and a and a mixer. Yes, and now we got uh, those two and two cameras. Yeah, which by the way, I think they're both still working. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't overheat them. <laughs> they haven't stopped recording. This is a first. This, this is, is a milestone. <laughs> High five! This man. is the first time we haven't had any like camera issues <laughs> it's taken us what three or four? Oh, this has got to be i think it's four, four. yeah this is because uh, the very the very first time we didn't actually use the camera whatsoever nope second time they like died within 20 minutes oh god third time they died <laughs> like in 20 minutes and then last week <laughs> one ran all the way through the other one died like two minutes last, out yeah two minutes before we ended and now finally they're working. Yeah. Uh, so far, so good. Knock on wood. Now, right? So, <laughs> all right. So, for those of you guys, uh, we've talked about how we want to start doing road trips and doing things outside, although Colorado weather right now is not <laughs> cooperating with us. But uh, we did purchase uh, some uh, uh, wireless mics, so that way we could do things outside, go uh, to uh, do trips. Uh, We're going to Roswell. That's got to be a stop. <laughs> Roswell's a stop. I believe the Stanley is going to be a stop. Yes, yes, absolutely. And we can tie that in at some point to our... Um, I think uh, Molly Brown's Mansion will be one. I love Molly Brown's Mansion. Uh... Not as big on the inside. It's the opposite of the TARDIS. <laughs> <laughs> I think if we could find a haunted tour for Denver, we should do that. Yes. Philly haunted tour, by the way. If you guys go to Philly and get the chance, do it. Honestly, I think, I know we talked a little bit about Philly. Uh, we got to go. Uh, I think we talked about Philly on our very first episode. I think we actually got to do uh, a true episode about Philly. All right. Because I, uh, I think Philly's a... Uh, a phenomenal place to visit. Yeah, I think or, we gotta go. Or actually, maybe not even just about Philly, or just talk. Uh, do an episode about traveling all together, like all the different places we've been. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> oh, what a what a hilarious TV show! Freaking uh, Frank, right? <laughs> all of them. Um, uh, did you ever watch? What did you think of the dumpster baby episode? Oh, dude! <laughs> show, I, I don't know. If there's a more wrong TV show that ever aired. <laughs> Flip, flip, Philadelphia, flip, flip, Philadelphia. Oh. Frank, I mean, they, there's the one where Danny DeVito, who's who, uh, who plays the character Frank. Like I think it was like a Christmas episode or whatever, but he's like nude and he's like hiding out in a leather couch. Oh, no, <laughs> I don't think I saw that one. And I don't think I missed anything. <laughs> and he's like climbing out of the couch. Please it no. looks like the couch oh. is giving birth. Oh uh, my god, no! Jim Carrey, pet detective here. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. It's a it's a good episode. All right, so next week, the challenge. Don't forget your brand. What five things do you want to be known for? I have no idea. Yeah, you got a whole week to figure this out. I I, I recommend you. I've had a whole, I had my whole lifetime to figure it out. Ralph Lauren or Cole Haan. And if you don't come up with five answers, I'm going to come up with them for you. So I I don't think uh, (laughs) clothing should be part of your brand. It shouldn't be, but usually when you admire something, you could also choose your car. You know, for me, absolutely. Um, my favorite car would absolutely be the Ferrari. And a, a large part of that's not just because there's sweet rides, but because Aston uh, Martin, uh, there you go. So I want the spy car. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. And, and some of its history with James Bond. Hell yeah. 
<laughs> pretty amazing um, for me with Ferrari, though. A lot of it is about passion and Enzo Ferrari um, starting a car company. Uh, you know, when he first started, he was working with Alfa Romeo, and later it took years before I, I think it was finally 1947 when he first branded his first car with a Ferrari badge. Um, but over time, he's got and has maintained the longest running team in Formula One racing and many of these things. Austin Martin's got a racing lineage and heritage as well. So those things. Um, but with that, I think, you know, it kind of ties right back into your master key system. Who am I? What am I? Um, and, and knowing that and being part of, yeah, this is what I like. And I just say the clothing piece because I have found that usually what you see in these things you admire and you appreciate are things you also want to be part of. I can see that. But anyways, well, I don't know if I'll figure it out in five days. <laughs> you got a week. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if I'll be able to figure it out, but I'll try. I mean, what's 40 years when you got a week? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if I can figure out something. All right. Maybe I'll ask around, see what people think about me. There you go. I like that. So we did get wireless mics. We are talking about taking trips to Roswell, amongst other places. We will do an episode on Philly. Um, I think we got to, like, just go. I think we we just take the plunge sometime this summer, um, take a long weekend or a few days, just go for a few days, bounce out, have a blast, make sure we eat at a couple of the restaurants that are in, always sunny in Philadelphia, <laughs> um, do a haunted tour if we can manage it, and uh, really talk about the history history that's there as well there's a ton of history there. i know and a ton of art that's where i so, fell in love with monet i do believe we've uh, reached our our time limit for tonight all right so what do you got man i just uh really want to say you know noah thank you for getting this started for approaching me with this it has been i am not going to say an easy ride uh, we are not necessarily the technologically savvy individuals we once were but we're gaining momentum we're gaining ground we're making improvements um and you know for those of you you mentioned the young lady in arizona leslie thank you for your feedback for your recommendation for this bar uh, i really appreciate that um, one of the things that helps anyone get better in a mentor relationship or not is feedback and using that feedback and it's not always you might be afraid to give it because it might hurt or you think it might hurt uh no one are pretty pretty resilient and adaptable and we'll take it and run with it good words all right, so uh, like always, um, we are on Spotify, Podbean, uh, Amazon Music, YouTube, and Rumble. So if, uh, please, uh, if you're, I'm assuming if you're listening to us, you're uh, you're probably checking us out on one of those places. But uh, please like, share, and subscribe to our podcast. Also, uh, if you could leave a comment, um, obviously as, as you saw. Um, one of our one of the people who listened to our podcast, they uh, left a comment, so we are going to pursue that. Maybe if we get our wireless mics and <laughs> cameras working, we'll take that to uh, the uh, to the to the horror, horror bar, bar with us. Uh, and uh, I just want to say that hopefully all of you uh, have a wonderful evening, and we appreciate uh, those of you who do listen to us and those who leave comments. And uh, if I have to come up with five things about what my personal brand is, uh, maybe all of you, hopefully you guys will do the same thing and leave it in the comments because we would love to uh, to see those as well. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe we'll even bring you on to share that with us when we talk about yeah, our smart absolutely. challenges. Uh, since we still haven't had anyone who has suggested a scotch to us. Um, speaking of which, Noah, thank you for going on this journey with me with the Talisker Storm. Not a disappointment. Actually very enjoyable. I look forward to enjoying this one again in a flight of Taliskers, comparing it to the, the 10 and maybe uh, Distiller's Edition um, outside this summer. Sounds like fun. All right, guys. Thanks again, and hopefully you have a wonderful night. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>